Hey everybody, Coach Troy here. Now, I did just receive my 2600 plus a couple days ago and I did a little test of everything that was in the box, checked it out, let you know what I think in my last video. So now, um, if you look at uh, on the website, it will say there's a list of games that do and don't work in this machine. Now, I thought I had some of the um, unconfirmed games, but I don't. I thought I did. I don't. How terrible is that? So I can't do any that kind of testing. And I don't have any homebrews. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have no homebrews. I have not been supporting the community. My fault. But uh, what I can do, and what I am going to do here, is I'm going to just take a stack of games and uh, samples from different developers and just kind of see how they work in the machine, if there's anything different, how they play, how they look, you know, and whatnot. So, without further ado, you know, we check this one out, so it's time to move on. And first one we're going to check out is a little collaboration between everyone's favorite Nintendo and the Coleco Company, Colorado Leather Company. We're checking out Donkey Kong. All right, starting off with ColecoVision's Donkey Kong. And, yeah, looks like it starts okay. It looks, you know, looks as good as it can jumping over these, uh... They look like cookie crisps. That cookie cereal, that's what I always think of. Well, looks like this, uh... Coleco game is playing just fine. Looks good. Looks almost too clear though, like the presentation. I don't know. I guess it's that HDMI. On to the next. So Donkey Kong and all its gingerbread man glory plays just fine. Actually plays well, you know. I thought this game was a little better than it got a little credit for. Anyway. Done with that one, we're gonna move on, and our next one is gonna be from everyone's favorite Atari game developer. Activision. Now Activision, we could have done a ton of different games by them. Uh, River Raid, Pitfall, you know, they've done so many, but I don't know. I've always liked this one a lot. It's kind of simple, but it just, it's just a fun one. And again, looks clean. Almost too clean. <laughs> But it plays well, he's jumping fine, same great controls. And bam! Gonna catch that sucker no problem. But no rest for the wicked, immediately on to the next. Bam! Gotcha sucker. Alright, on to the next one. I love me some Keystone Capers. So, that game. Uh, works just fine, works well, everything plays just great, smooth as usual from Activision. God, they do good stuff. Uh, so yeah, they're working just fine. But next up, we got a Parker Brothers game. Parker Brothers did a lot, a lot of good games for the Atari. Right. Frogger, Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers had a lot of really good games. This is actually one of my least favorite ones that uh, they did. I think a lot of their other games are much better. But, still. This is one I really liked in the arcade. Maybe that's why. I wish it was the uh, arcade version <laughs> instead of this one. I mean, it's okay. It definitely could be worse. Oops. Or I could just jump right off a lily pad. Ooh, got the fly. Go me. And we have a cat in the way. Yeah, Frogger, you know. Very popular game, but never one of my favorites, outside of the arcade anyway. Uh, still plays well, plays nice. I'm not seeing any problems so far. So next up, we got, we got our rainbow. We got our interesting uh, cart shape. We're going to the game from iMagic or Imagic? Imagic, iMagic. Whatever, one or the other. Let's check it out. Oh, all right, a magic dragon fire. Oh, come on. Let me, let me get my balance here. Well. Ah. 
Ah, escape, escape. But they definitely had some of the more creative games. And I appreciate that. All right, let's try this again. Get a little more serious. There we go. All right, much better. All right. Maybe I need to focus a little more next time I play this one. On to the next. Now, while I would love to say the lack of precision was the machine's fault, it was probably all just me. Um, yeah. <laughs> this company makes some solid games. This one is no exception. And it's working just fine. Uh, but we're going to keep with the uh, strange card designs and go to one from Data Age next. Now, this one has been giving me some trouble sometimes when trying to get it to go, so... Let's, uh, let's see if the, uh, the 12, there it goes, game failed. All right, there we go. Now, this game's a little different. It's like a weird combination of, uh, Defender and, I don't know. <laughs> I need to get the things, which ones are which. I can't remember. One of these are bombs and one of these are trophies. Oh, I guess not that one. Oh, come on now, that's just a cheap shot. I need to focus a little more if I'm going to try this one. It took a second, but we got her running, and this uh, Defender clone worked just fine. Well, I don't know, I was still terrible at playing it. I think I need to focus a little bit more and not worry about recording so much, right? Anyway. Done with that one, and the last one we're going to check out is going to be from Mattel. Yes, you know this cart design, and no, it's not going to be a sports game. Mattel is the creator of the Intellivision, but they also made games for their competitor in Atari. So, let's check this one out. So this will be my last one in checking out uh, games from uh, different designers. M-Network Mattel. Actually, I really like this game. A maze shooter. It's almost kind of a Pac-Man with a gun esque. They had a it was called something different for the Intellivision, and a lot of people disagree with me, but I think I like this version better. All these weird little design thingies are actually robots. Some of them are two-headed robots. It's all about um, timing your bullet and where you're going to send it. And then you definitely got to get out of the way before you, <laughs> before you get shot back. I love how the manual just refers to... Uh, <laughs> refers to your character here as the man. Yeah, I get my revenge on that robot. Ah. Alright, that's enough of this one. So Mattel's product's working just fine. So yeah, Dark Caverns, or Night Stalker, as it was known for the Intellivision. Why they changed the game, I don't know. Or, there's got to be some kind of story on the name there. Anyway, uh, so those are the games I just ran through, tested some. I you know, wish I had some homebrews to test out and some of those games that were labeled untested. I'm still not sure how you would have a list of untested games. I guess there's got to be some level of testing that they wanted to hit to be okay with. Um, but that being said, everything I've been playing so far is, is working. You know, we got the occasional loading error, but outside of that, everything is working just fine. So the 2600 Plus is doing what it's saying. That all being said, for the next video, well, yes, this controller, I said, works great, just fine. But we all know what everyone really wants to try to play with, so we're going to test that out. See you all next time. Thanks for joining me as I start my journey into the world of retro gaming. If you're interested in my other hobbies of fitness or board games, check out my other channel. Anyways, this is Coach Troy. I'll see you all next time.